6.5 Indirect Proofs and Triangle Inequality Look at the triangle below. Find the largest angle and the longest side and label them angle A and side A. The largest angle is this one up top, so I'm going to call that angle A. And the longest side is this bottom side, so I'm going to lay that, label that side A. Find the smallest angle and the shortest side and mark them angle C and side C. So here's my smallest angle, angle C, and here's my smallest side, side C. And then the middle angle and side and label them B and side B. That has to be the last one. What do you notice? What you should notice is that each of them are directly across from each other or opposite from each other. So if I go to my smallest angle, it's opposite of my smallest side. This is no coincidence. If one side of, an, of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite, the longer side is lar larger than the angle opposite the shorter side. This is called the triangle longer side theorem. So that means that if angle A is across from five and eight is across from C, then angle C must be larger than angle A. We don't really know by how much, but we do know that it's larger. So C must be larger than A because eight is larger than five. If one angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, then the side opposite the larger angle is longer than the side opposite the smaller angle. This is called the triangle larger angle theorem. So take a look at this example. If this angle is 50 degrees and this angle is 30 degrees, that means that BC is longer than AB because 50 is bigger than 30. So BC is greater than AB. Example one, list the angles from smallest to largest. A stage prop shows a large triangular mountain has a bottom of 32, left slope of 24, and a right slope of 26. And we would like to list these angles from smallest to largest. So what you're looking for is the smallest side. Well, JK is the smallest side and that is opposite of L. So angle L is the smallest angle. Now we look for the next smallest side. The next smallest side is 26. 26 is opposite of angle J. And finally, that leaves us with our longest side, 32, which is opposite of angle K. So we can say angle L is less than angle J is less than angle K. And I'm gonna put little angle symbols on those to keep them separate from the less than symbols. Triangle PQR with side lengths PQ is 6.8, 5.9, and 6.1 respectively. And we're trying to list the angles from smallest to largest. So again, look for the smallest side. 5.9 is opposite of angle Q is less than our next smallest angle, which is 6.1 is opposite of angle P. And finally, our longest side is 6.8, opposite of angle R. Uh, not a comma there, that should be just a less than. Less than angle, less than angle R, <laughs> QPR. Okay, now you can go the other direction as well. Example number two, you can list the sides, the side lengths from shortest to longest. So what you're looking for now is you're looking for the smallest angle and then the, you start from there, opposite side length um, goes with the smallest angle. So on this one, I've got a 51, a 47, and I'm not sure what angle F is, but we do know that three angles in a triangle add to 180, so we can figure out angle F. So 51 plus 47 is 98. 180 minus 98 leaves me with 82. So funny enough, that's my largest angle. So find your smallest one, 51 degrees is opposite of um, 
E, F. Actually, I'm so sorry. 47 is your smaller one, so we do that one first. 47 is opposite of D, F. Is less than E, F. Oops, not in a comma. Less than our last side length, D, E. This one's got all three angles on it, so smallest angle is 29, opposite of ST, 30 is opposite of RS, opposite of RT. Okay, this last one here, um, I've got uh, variables in the spots for angles, so I can't, I can't do these ones yet without knowing what they are. So again, we're going to use triangle sum theorem because we know three angles in a triangle add to 180. So 2x plus an x plus x minus 4 is 180. 2, 3, 4 x's minus 4 equals 180. Add 4, 4x four equals 184. Divide by 4 and x equals 46. So that means that this corner angle here is 46. You double it to get your top angle, so that's 92. And 46 minus 4 is 42. So then we go from smallest to largest, so 42 smallest. So that's going to be QP is less than PR is less than QR. Below are three attempted triangle constructions. Only the first group of line segments only the first group of line segments create a triangle. So take a look. So if you've got five and then four and two, those will connect up to make a triangle. But if you've got five and two and two, it's not long enough on either side to connect up. And then what about five and three and two? Well, three and two is five. So look what happens. It comes down and it meets back down on that that line. So that means that this is three units long and this is two units long. So it doesn't make a triangle. It just makes one single line. So what does this have to do with each other? So let's take a look at the numbers. Four plus two is six. Two plus two is four. And three plus two is five. So in comparison to five, what do we notice? Four plus two is six. That's larger than five. Two plus two is four. That's smaller than five. And 3 plus 2 is 5, it equals 5. So which of these do, do not make a triangle? This one does not make a triangle. And this one does not make a triangle. So it cannot be less than or equal to the third side length. So what theorem do we get from these constructions? It's called the triangle inequality theorem. The sum or the addition of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. It must be exclusively greater than. It cannot be equal to. If it's equal to, it will not make a triangle. So four plus six is gr four plus two is six. Six is greater greater than five, greater than the third side length. So let's try some examples. Example number one, a triangle has one side length of 14 and another side length of nine. Describe the possible lengths of the third side. So let's start with the second one, large values of X. So 14 and nine and X. So what can that third side length be? The way that you get that is you add them together. So 14 plus nine, is 23. So this is our top end. This is the, the top value that it can be. But if you want to go the other direction, what number with 9 is going to make it so that 14, so that that sum is greater than 14? So we can write a little mathematical statement. X plus 9 needs to be greater than 14. That's a 14. Uh, minus 9 so x must be greater than 5. So think about that. 9 plus 5 is going to be 14. 
But if I say that x is greater than 5, then 5 is our bottom number. So the easiest way to do it is to subtract your two side lengths to get your bottom, 14 minus 9 to get 5 and then add your two side lengths to get your top value, 14 plus nine to get 23. So the final thing that you need to do is write it as an inequality statement. So X needs to be greater than five, but less than 23. So any numbers inside of that range will make this a true triangle. So let's try it on example number two. A triangle has one side length of 12 and another of 20. Describe the possible lengths. So let's do our subtraction first. So 20 minus 12 gives me my bottom end of 8. And 20 plus 12 gives me my top end of 32. So x must be greater than 8 but less than 32. All right, and then our last example here, example number three. Decide whether it's possible to construct a triangle given the side lengths. 4, 9, and 10. So what you need to do is pick your smaller two sides and see if the sum is greater than the third side. So is 4 plus 9 greater than 10? Is that a question mark? <laughs> 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 is greater than 10, so yes. How about 8, 9, and 18? Is 8 plus 9, is that greater, question mark, than 18? 8 plus 9 is 17, and 17 is not greater than 18, so no. 17 is less than 18. How about 5, 7, and 12? 5 plus 7, is that greater than 12? No, 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 equals 12. And are they allowed to be equal in length? No. Thank you.